When the flood came, it destroyed them. How many of them? Now, look at that place we are reading. Verse 28. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lord, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lord went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and did what? And destroyed them all. And only Lord and the two wives, I mean the two children were saved and the wife perished because she looked back and became a pillar of salt. And all the people in those days, all those people perished. Now, I want you to understand that what will happen when the trumpet shall sound, when Christ shall, shall appear to rapture the saints, it is going to be exactly as we are reading it now. That all the people that refuse to repent, surrender their life to Jesus Christ, they shall be destroyed and that without remedy. They may not find the opportunity to repent and to amend their ways anymore at all, at all. Now, look at this place. In, in, the, in verse 30, verse 30, where we are reading, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he, he which shall be upon the house top and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lord's wife. There shall be no room for uh, repentance and no room for gathering this or amending your ways. It is something that is going to take place. In a twinkle of an eye, there will be no chance at all, at all. And the Bible says, remember Lord's wife, who was trying to amend, who was trying to, you know, um, look back, to prepare. And he became a pillar of salt, and she perished. So, there shall be no room for preparation. Look at verse 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two, two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Listen to me. It's going to be a great day. A day of judgment. A day the Lord is going to separate his people from the ungodly. A day God is going to rapture the saints and the unrighteous, the compromisers, the unbelievers, all of them will be left to mourn and weep and cry forever and ever. Take note of that. Let's go to Matthew 24. Again, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, reading from verse 42, Matthew 24, from verse 42, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have washed and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat, in due season. Blessed is that servant 
whom is Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Now, listen to me. My brothers and sisters, the point is this. It will happen in a twinkling of an eye. The Lord shall appear to rapture the saints in the air. And when many people are thinking that it is not yet the time, the Bible said the Lord shall appear. When many people are running around how to make it, how to make much money, how to enjoy their body. When many people are too busy with activities of this world, the Bible says, in a twinkle of an eye, the Lord shall appear. And at that time, there shall be no room for repentance. There shall be no room for amendment. And then, if one must make, make it at the end, then the Bible said, who then is faithful? You should be, such person should be watchful and be on the duty post and ensure that nothing is standing between him and God so that that day will not happen to the person on our way. It will not take the person by surprise. All I want you to understand, brethren, as a child of God, be serious with have being born again and be watchful at all times. Because a great day is coming and it is going to be a horrible day for those people that have no time for God. They will regret and they will regret forever. Take note of that. And so, the Lord will have every one of us that are choosing ones to make sure the things you are hearing, the things you are hearing in this church, that you put them into practice. I'm not just saying I'm a Christian, I am a chosen, I am born again, but you are not living according to the will of God. Take note. Prepare now, because a great day is coming. I want you to read Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. He says... Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And look at verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not prophesied in thy name? Take note, prophets. And in thy name have cast out devils. Take note. Uh, deliverance ministers. And in thy name have done many wonderful words. Take note. Miracle workers. Now, look at verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never know you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. I want you to understand heaven is not by prophecy. Heaven is not by casting out devil. Heaven is not by working miracle. Heaven will be determined by your relationship with God. The Bible made us understand that without holiness, no eyes shall see the Lord. And if you must make heaven, make sure nothing is standing between you and God. Don't forget, if the Lord tarries, if the Lord delays, there are many people that are going to die before that day. And if you die in sin, you will go to hell fire. There is no repentance in the grave. Amend now. And as many of us that will be alive when this trumpet shall sound, when the Lord shall appear, appear on the earth, appear in the cloud listening to the point I'm making as many of us that shall be alive when he shall appear in the air for the rapture of the saints I want you to understand that keep on preparing and ensuring that your garments are pure that nothing is standing between you and God so that when that trumpet shall sound 
all of us shall make rapture. Is it clear on what I'm saying? There's need for you to understand that there is no room, there shall be no room for preparation on that day. That day will be a day of crisis for the ungodly, a day of sorrow for the ungodly, a day of mourning, of weeping, of crying for those that have no time for God and for compromisers. But it, is be, it, it shall be the day for the saint in Christ to rejoice and to rejoice forevermore. So I want you to take time to ensure that that day will not take you by surprise. Remember, where we read before, in Matthew 24, verse 30, but not reading again, it made it very clear that those people that are sinners, that that day will be the beginning of sorrow, a day of mourning, and for the, but for the righteous, a day of joy. Many shall, de, many shall regret and sorrow to her fire as the Antichrist will begin to show their wickedness on them. That is, as soon as the rapture of, saint have, of the saints have taken place, Antichrist will now manifest and they will begin to torment all the people, even those um, uh, compromisers, those who are purporting to be Christians, but they are not living right. Antichrist will begin to torment them and it will come out clearly and make them to receive a mark. And the only person that refused to take that mark, the person will not buy, the person will not sell, the person will not even enter on, the, on any public transport. He will not even go on the road. And at such time, all those people who are careless about their faith, and they say they will not uh, take the mark of Antichrist, my brothers and sisters, such people cannot stand the torment, the persecution of the Antichrist government. They cannot be able to survive it. They will torture them. They will not like them to die. They will torture them and ensure that they will denounce Christ and take the mark. It will be almost impossible for one that did not make it in this time of grace to make it in the time when there is no grace, when there is no more mercy. It will be difficult for one that did not make it now, this time that God's mercy is upon the whole earth, God's grace abound. It is difficult for the person that did not make it now to make it when there shall be no mercy, when the grace shall not be there in the time of the Antichrist. Any person that cannot make it now and thinking that at the time of the Antichrist, the person will stand his ground and they will not uh, take the mark. That person is joking. Because you cannot be able to relate with anybody at all, at all. Unless you take the mark. And if you receive the mark, 666, that person will be cast into, that person is doomed. That person cannot be cannot be saved anymore. That person will be cast into a fire. That mark means that you are condemned forever. I have no business with heaven anymore. And I want you to understand that Antichrist is everywhere now. Preparing for the coming of the manifestation of that Antichrist uh, government all over the world. To show you that Christ is at, the, at hand. Christ is on the air. Christ is coming at any time. You better prepare now. You better do everything possible so that you will not be a victim of the Antichrist. Because if it happens, there is something you should understand. That for you to be able to deny them, which you may be crying for death, 
wishing that you die and it will not be possible until you take the mark. But I want you to understand. Some people may be saying, well, I will not take the mark and uh, I, will, I will stand my ground and then better die than to take the mark. It may not be so easy. So the best thing for you to do is for you to repent now and, uh, and escape that time of the Antichrist. It is true that if you didn't escape the, I mean, I said the mark of the Antichrist, then that if you're able to survive, that you can, be, you can be saved by your own blood. But then it is difficult. It is impossible. If you cannot make it now. So, take advantage of the grace of God now, of the mercy of God now, and escape. I want you to take note that all those people who will miss the rapture, they cannot stand the torment of Antichrist. And many people are, that are like that will sorrow and regret as the Antichrist will begin to show their wickedness on them. And as I told you before, their money, the women and men that deceive them shall not save them on that day. They will try to repent, but it will be too late for them. Because the Bible made this very clear. That all such people, they will do everything possible, but they cannot be free. And they, they may wish to die, but it may not be possible. I want you to look at Revelation chapter 6 from verse 15. Revelation chapter 6 from verse 15. It says, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every man, every free man, hid themselves in the dams, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne, and from the rod of the, la of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? That is the question. Who shall be able to stand? Man, listen to me. On that day, when the saint might have gone, and the Antichrist government have risen up, so many people will be crying. And they want the mountain to fall on them. And they want to hide themselves. And they want to escape. And they want to die. But there will be no room for that. Mighty men, great men, rich men, those that are free, those that are bound, as many of them that refuse to accept Christ now and begin to live righteous life, on that day, they will cry and say, mountain, kill them. But it will not be possible at all, at all. Because the wrath of God has come upon them. Take note. Some will even try to die, as I told you, but dead will reject them. Dead will reject them. According to Revelation chapter 6, verse 16, where we read, some will cause the dead they were born into this world and regret their existence on earth. And yet, it will not bring the solution. Some people will curse their mother, curse their father, curse those people who didn't preach to them. And yet, it will not bring the remedy. There will be a lot of regret. Some people look at their property, at their vehicle, at their money, and begin to and curse those things and set them ablaze. And it will not bring the remedy. Some people will find their husband, find their wife, and their children, and their parents. And yet, it will not bring the remedy. Many will do a lot of things. In fact, it is going to be a lot of crisis. Some will jump into the ocean, but they will not die. It will not bring the remedy. Some will do many things. It is going to be 
crisis there. After the Lord has taken his people away. The grace will be taken away. And nothing like a, have mercy upon me. I beg or forgive me. Those things will be the thing of the past. It will, be, it will be a time of wickedness everywhere. And if people are fighting, they can fight from now till eternity. Because nothing like forgiveness. It will be a terrible time. When the Lord shall appear, if there is any person who claims to be a Christian and refuses to repent, it will mark the beginning of sorrow for such person. And that person will be sorrow to eternity. Take note. If you look at Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 10, let's see something there. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with them, I mean with him, to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I saw unto you, I know you not. Think about that. Foolish and wise virgin. The wise had oil in their lamp. But the foolish, the foolish one had no oil. And the, when the bridegroom came, all the wise virgin followed him and entered and the door was shut. But the, but the foolish virgin went to buy. When they came back, they began to knock. And he said, I'm sorry, I know you not. And that was the end. And they were shut off from entering. I want you to understand that there shall be no room for amendment. There shall be no room for repentance. There shall be no room for let me prepare, let me amend my way or do my restitution. Do it now. For that day shall be great. Do it now. If you look at the place we are reading, verse, chapter 25, verse 13, there is something you need to read there. It says, watch therefore, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. We don't know the day when it's coming, when this door shall be shut, when the saints shall be taken away. And because we don't know the day, I want you to understand that the Lord wants you to take advantage of this message and prepare and ensure that nothing is standing between you and God. Take note. All such people that have been deceived by the devil and they had the opportunity and never used it, such people will regret on that day. People that have opportunity as you have now, you are hearing the word of God and you don't take it into action, into practice. You don't allow that word of God to control your life. Rather, you control the word of God. Rather, you, don't, you direct the spirit of God. Rather, you are selective on what to do or how or the things you are going to do as the pastor is preaching. You are saying, well, this one is not for me. This one is for them. Uh, well, I don't care what happened on that day. I want you to understand that all such people are deceived by the devil. And on that day, when the Lord shall appear, they shall repent and cry, but it will be too late for them. Take note of that. All those people who had this opportunity and were not serious, and are not serious at all at all, all such people will be like the foolish virgin on that day. They will try to amend their ways, but it will be too late. You are hearing this preaching, you are hearing the testimonies, and you are hearing the warning, and yet, you don't want to do anything with it. You continue to live your life anyhow. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, that that day, your story will be 
like that of the foolish virgin. Because you will now remember everything we have taught in this church. And you want to make amendment, but it will be too late. And the devil will be laughing at you. And all those uh, uh, um, human agents of the devil, they will be mocking you. That all this while you have been deceiving yourself. I pray that it shall never be your portion. I pray that no believer shall experience that crisis day, that day of sorrow, day of regret, day of re repentance, but that can never be achieved from eternity to eternity. I pray that no chosen member will be there on that day. Amen. That before the trumpet sound, as soon as the sound re echoes in the air, that all the chosen will drop their body and make the rapture. That is my prayer for you in Jesus' name. I want us to go to point number two. The rejoicing of the righteous and warning. The righteous will have every cause to rejoice because they shall behold the Savior and the mansion above. As soon as they behold the Savior, Joy unspeakable shall flow into their heart, and it will mark the beginning of joy and everlasting joy. If you look at this place in the Bible, John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 1 Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. Now the point is this, that after we have been raptured, we shall enter into our mansion above where the Lord has prepared for me and for you. And as we enter that mansion, that will be from eternity to eternity. All the sorrow and persecution and labor shall be no more from eternity to eternity. No matter what you pass through, no child, no husband, no wife, no money, no matter the persecution, no house, and people spoke evil of you, as soon as you behold the glory of God, as soon as you are raptured above, and you begin to see a mansion, all those things will be forgotten forever and ever. There is something I want you to understand. The joy of the things of this world will surely come to an end. No matter what you have, no matter who you are, no matter what you have achieved, no matter how you have fortified yourself, the joy of the things of this world and of this world will surely come to an end. But for those people, who will eventually enter the kingdom of God, they will rejoice forever and ever. Their joy shall have no end. Take note of that. They shall exclaim as soon as they cross over there. All such people, such believers that are maintaining purity, that are living uncompromising Christian life, they were committed, consecrated to God, doing the will of God from their heart. As soon as they're raptured, they will exclaim, so I made it. So after all these things, so I made it. After all this trial, so I made heaven. And all the sorrow of the past will be what? Forgotten. They will say, so I made it. God, I give you the glory. And take note. Such saints shall shout glory. Glory be to God. Lord, you are worthy. Your word is true. You have redeemed me from this sinful world. God, I give you the glory. They will shout glory and glory and praises unto the Lord. I want you to consider Matthew 
chapter 13 verse 41 Matthew chapter 13 verse 41 the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and they which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire that shall be willing and gnashing of teeth. But look at verse 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who had ears to hear. Let him hear. The righteous shall shine. And they shall shine like star in heaven. And they shall be in heaven forever and ever. Look at Revelation chapter 5 verse 9. Revelation chapter 5. Reading verse 9. It says, And they sung a new song, which means they shall sing on that day, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the sea thereof, for thou shalt Thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nations. Now look at verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, What is the lamb that was slain? To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings and every creature which is in heaven and on earth, on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them had I seen blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that seated upon the throne. And unto the Lamb forever and ever. Then as we cross over there, we shall sing. We shall worship God, just like the angels of heaven are worshiping God forever and ever. All our sorrows shall be no more. If you look at Revelation chapter 7, verse 10, you see, this shall be the portion of as many that shall make it on that day. Revelation chapter 7, from verse 10. And cry with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which seated upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the ed elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessings and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Now, look at that place we are reading. Verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And when they came there, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither taste any more, neither shall son. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountain of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. The point is this. This shall be the portion of as many who shall be raptured who shall, be, who shall make it at the end of this life? They shall worship the Lord forever. There shall be no more hunger. There shall be no more sorrow. There shall be no more thirst anymore. God shall be with them. 
and they shall be with him forever and ever. All their sorrows and suffering of the past shall be forgotten. I want you to understand, this shall be the portion of all believers, all the choosing that will make it on the last day. They shall rejoice with the bridegroom on that wedding day above, and their tears and sorrows shall be no more. There shall be no more death, sickness, pain, hunger. Those things shall never be their portion anymore at all, at all. Therefore, whatever it will take you to make it, it is worth it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whatever it will make you, I mean, take you to make heaven at the end of your life, I said it is worth it. Remember, the things of this world will come to an end. Whether you believe it or not, one day you must pack off here. The question is, where will you be? When, what will be your, the, 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 the place of your final abode? What will be the place? Will it be heaven or hell fire? If you look at Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, you see that all the people that will make it at the end of, of, end of it all, they shall be with the Lord. The Lord shall be their God. And they shall rejoice and they shall never sorrow anymore. Revelation 21 verse 1. Through to verse 4 and verse 7. It says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any, there shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. I want you to understand that as soon as we cross over, all this suffering and sorrows and crying shall be no more. No more death. From everlasting to everlasting, we shall be with the Lord forever and ever. Look at verse 7. He said, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my, my son. So let us endeavor, come what may, trials, temptation, persecution, hunger, whatever may befall us here, as we are here on earth now. My brothers and sisters, so far it to be so now. What I wait for you is greater than what you are going through. They cannot be equal at all, at all. The little suffering, little trial, little temptation, all those things will surely come to pass and it shall end forever and ever. The point is that anything that will make you to miss heaven Please take those things away from you. No matter whatever. No matter whatever. Because the things of this world will surely pass away. The righteous shall rejoice forever and ever. Don't forget, after 150 years, the highest you can live now, you will be no more in this earth. The question is, where will you be? If you had rejoiced 150 years and then go to suffer from eternity to eternity, I want you to find out what kind of uh, joy or wisdom is in it. That 150 years of joy and then you suffer forever. It is better to suffer 150 years and enjoy forever and ever. So, take note. The righteous shall be with the Lord, and they shall rejoice evermore, and they shall, their joy shall never cease from eternity to 
eternity. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. It says, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. Then which, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Remember, as many of us that will make the rapture, we shall be with the Lord forever and ever. As many of us that die in the Lord, that maintain purity to the end, we shall be with the Lord forever and ever. And all sorrows and tears shall be wiped away. There shall never be a portion anymore in Jesus' name. So, you should therefore take heed to your ways. Least the devil, the devils and the demons ask you this question. So, you let her come here. After so many years of laboring, after so many years of serving the Lord, after so many years of claiming to be a Christian, brethren, I want you to be very careful so that you will not miss heaven and the devil and the demon begin to ask you, so you let her come to this place. What have you come to do? Where you say you're a Christian, when you have been binding him, when you have been casting him out, and then you miss heaven, the devil will deal with you. He will not have mercy on you at all, at all. He will deal with, deal with you ruthlessly. He will punish such person because all the while you are on the earth, you have been binding him, and you have been, you know, casting him out, and you have been also saying that you are a Christian, and then uh, making caricature of the devil. He will not have any, of course, you know that devil have no mercy or compassion. He will deal with you much more than those people that were under him. But I want you to understand that if you miss heaven, you will suffer forever and ever. So, be warned. Amend your ways and be serious about your relationship with God and of making heaven at the end of your life. We have an enemy who is always opposing children of God and is ready to destroy, is ready to destroy anybody that is careless. He is ready to swallow any person that is careless. He is ready to take away the Bible from you and give you another spirit. He is ready to... to Stop you if you are careless. He's ready to take away the Bible completely from you so that you will miss heaven at the end of your life. We have an enemy. His work is to make sin to be sweet. The work of the devil is to make sin to be what? To be sweet. Sweeter than righteousness. To make, to make you to see lying as the best way of life. To make you to see fornication as the best pleasure in this world. To make you to delight in evil. That is the work of the devil. And as soon as you succeed to make things of this world to be so fascinating and enjoyable to you, he has succeeded. The next thing he will do is he will capture your soul. And if you die in that condition, it will be terrible for you. My brothers and sisters who are here, I want you to approach the things of this life with all prayerfulness and carefulness so that the things of this world will not take you away from the kingdom of God. For the things of this world will surely pass away. I want you to now, please listen to me. If you are aspiring to be rich or you are aspiring to be anything in this life, I want you to take your mind back. You are not the first person 
that I've been all that rich. You are not the first person that have got that decree in life. There are many people that have been president and governors and professors and rich men. The question you have to ask yourself, where are they today? Do their riches and their title continue forever? I want you to look back. Those men that existed in the 60s or 50s, those who that existed, the good, great men you have heard of their stories, the question is, where are they? I want you to understand. If you are thinking, I want to make it, I want to be very rich, you just want to be rich. But there are people that have been rich and they have died with all their riches. They can be described to be the owner of Lagos State and owners of Nigeria and owners of the America. The question is, do they pass away with all those things? Do they carry those things to, to die? Don't let the riches of this world to deceive you. Don't let the title of this world to deceive you. Don't even let your flesh to deceive you. Because your flesh will be telling you, eat what you like. Enjoy yourself. Why are you suffering? But I want you to understand that the greatest deceiver you have is your flesh. Because your flesh can never enter heaven. The Bible said, flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Your flesh must drop here, rotten and perish. But your soul will cross over, either to heaven or to hell fire. Don't let your flesh to deceive you. There are many people today they'll be asking you if I stop dressing the way I'm dressing I will look somehow. And there are many people today they say if I, if I don't make it if I don't have money uh, well, you have, the, the, his word will be finished. But I want you to understand that what matters is where you spend eternity. The things of this world will surely pass away. Those that made it before, they have gone. And those that died without repentance, they have gone to hell. All the years of glory, they are all forgotten. Years of earthly glory. Years of earthly pleasure. Years of amassing wealth. Those things have perished. Don't follow such people. Follow the teaching of the Bible. Follow the examples and legacy that Christ has left for us. Without holiness, no eye shall see the Lord. Let us take time to be holy, so that at the end of this world, we shall make heaven, and we shall enter into glory and rejoice forever. Watch it. The devil doesn't want any person to enter heaven. That's why he is walking day and night, every minute, to make sure that he will plant evil thought in you. Day and night to make sure that you commit sin. Day and night to make sure that you will stop serving God. Because he doesn't want you to go to heaven. I want you to take note. He is angry. He has missed heaven. And he doesn't want anybody to enter there. He wants to take everybody there. But our prayer is that nobody on earth, as God has raised us up, and God has given us the messages to the world that nobody will hear our message that will miss heaven at last. Amen. That is our prayer. If you look at this place in the Bible, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your enemy, the devil walketh about like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Devil is angry and he's going all about looking for who to destroy. And the Bible said in John chapter 10 and verse 10 a, he said, The thief cometh not, but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Every plan of the devil against you is to do what? To destroy. The devil has no good thing for you as long as you're a human being. It has no good thing for you at all, at all. Therefore, 
make sure you amend your ways. You repent of your sins. You stop compromising your Christian life. You stop coming to church without repentance. You stop calling yourself a Christian when a hypocrite. Be serious minded. Amend your ways. Be born again and take being born again very serious. Begin to live the life that pleases God so that at the end of this life, you will make heaven at last. Remember, it is never the will of God that any soul should perish. And if you remain in sin, if you remain in compromise, you can never see heaven. If you refuse to accept the truth of the Bible, if you refuse to believe that without holiness, no eye shall see God, and you continue to live anyhow, I want you to understand, at the end of it, or no matter how many years you are in the church, the devil will ask you, so you let her come here. Don't be deceived, wherever you are. Don't be deceived by so many people that are preaching in many places today. Who doesn't believe the existence of hellfire? Who doesn't believe heaven? Do not be deceived. With many people today who believe that, who are preaching, but they don't believe that somebody can be righteous. Remember, without holiness, without righteousness, nobody can see God. And all sinners, all liars, all unrighteous people, the Bible says they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I want to show you some places in the Bible. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, reading verse 9, Do you not that unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of the self with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. All the people with this kind of life, the Bible said, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And if they are not going to make heaven, where will they be? Answer me. If they shall not inherit the kingdom of God, where shall they be? Now, look at Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with the fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Can you see it? All liars, all murderers, all unbelievers, all immoral persons, idolaters, adulterers. The Bible said, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Are you among them? Are you among those people who refuse to repent and then you are claiming that you are Christian? You refuse to live righteous life. The Bible said, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Which means, they shall be cast into a fire. Therefore, amend your ways. Remember, now is the acceptable time. There is no repentance in the grave. There is no repentance after death. This is the time you will repent and mend your ways. And this is the time God will show you mercy. After death, there is nothing like mercy at all, at all. I want to show you the Bible. In Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, reading verse 27, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. After dead comes what? Judgment. If you want to repent, it is now. If you want to amend your ways, it is now. Otherwise, you will join those people that will regret on the last day. Those people that will say that, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. Why it is too late? Why, why there is no more chances of repentance? So, after death, 
comes judgment. I want you to look at 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2. He said, I have had thee in a time accepted. God said, I have had thee in the time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I scored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. My brothers and sisters, there is a time your prayers, your repentance, your plea will not be heard. After death, your pleading for, for mercy will not be heard. Your repentance will not be heard. After death, after the rapture, you are pleading for mercy will not be heard. And the Lord is telling you, I will hear you in the accepted time. And he said, now is what? The accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Now you are still alive. Now the rapture has not taken place. He said, now is the accepted time. If you can repent now, the grace is available. If you can repent now, mercy is available. If you can repent now, God will forgive you and God will wash you with the blood of, blood of Jesus Christ and make you a righteous person. But after the rapture, it will be dif difficult for you because the grace must have been taken away. After death, it will be difficult because no more grace. Because there is no repentance in the grave. So repent now. Don't forget, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know why you are here today. You want healing? You want deliverance? You want um, blessings? That, those things are wonderful. God will give them to you. But take note. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Please open your Bible. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. If you want healing, God is not against it. If you want deliverance, God is not against it. If you want God to bless you, God is not against it. If you want God to give you children, it's not against it. But if you need them, he said, seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, healing and deliverance and blessings and prosperity shall be added to you. God will give them to you. When you become a child of God, if you are not a child of God, I want you to take for instance, you are not my child. And then you come to my house and say, eh, give me uh, money to pay for my school fee. Give me food. I, 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 I will answer you, I don't know you. Where are you coming from? I don't know where you're afraid of I'm making. So if you want God to do these things for you, he said, be my child. And then how can you become a child of God? So that God will begin to take care of you and give you all your needs. Look at John chapter 3. Let's see our Bible. John chapter 3, reading verse 3, he said, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I son to thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, how can you be born again? You are going to be born again by the Spirit of God. By accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your personal Savior. That's what the Bible said in verse 16. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Why? Why must you pass through the son? Why must you be born again when you are born already? Now the simple reason is this. In Romans chapter, six, chapter 3 verse 23 the Bible said please open your Bible. The Bible said for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And if all have sinned, then we are away from God. We are cut off from God. And if we, if we must be reconciled with God, God has ordained a way. And Jesus said, I am that way. John chapter 14 verse 6. If you want to be reconciled with God, if you want to become a child of God, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. That is the ordination of God. Nobody can go against it. God has instituted that only through a righteous blood I can bring everybody back to me again, even though all have sinned. And that righteous blood, no man on earth has the righteous blood. And that is why God sent his only son to come to, through a virgin's womb without any contact of man 
to bring in in the world the righteous blood. Of course, you will agree with me that all have sinned and as a result, their, their blood cannot be righteous. That's why Jesus came without any contact of man by the Holy Ghost to bring the righteous blood. And don't forget in Exodus chapter 12 verse 13, the Bible said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Being example of the blood that God is going to use to redeem the world. And when Jesus shed his blood, he said, it is finished. According to John chapter 19 verse 13, Jesus said, it is finished. After shedding his blood, I want you to understand my brothers and sisters. If anybody wants to be a righteous person and um, please God and make heaven at last, you must be born again through the blood of Jesus Christ. And when that happened, my brothers and sisters, I'm assuring you that if you become a child of God, God will take care of you. And if you go on to maintain righteous life, you will make heaven at last. So, I want you to examine your life. As I'm concluding this message, I want to point out to you, a Christian is not a sinner, and a sinner is not a Christian. If you're living in sin, and you want to make heaven, it is a lie. You must repent now and amend your ways. Some of you will be asking, what is sin? I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters who are here, anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. It could be unbelief, as we have seen in Revelation. It could be hatred. It could be anger. It could be lying or pride or selfishness. All those things are sin. It could be contention. It could be bitterness and keeping malice, malice, bearing grudge. All those things are sin. Hatred, envy, backbiting, murmuring, speaking evil of people. All those things are terrible sin. Swearing with heaven and earth, worshiping idol, or cursing people. Those things are sin in the sight of God. Or maybe you are among those people that are into um, uh, secret court, open court, marine court, witchcraft, court, any kind of court, whether village court or student court or foreign court or local court, anything court is in a sin. So repent of them and gather their property and bond them. And ask God for mercy. God will show you mercy. And if you are among those people going to native doctors to make sure for prosperity, for protection, that is evil. The Bible commanded God, commanded you shouldn't have another God beside me. So you must renounce those things. Get out of your charm and bond them. And promise God no more. The Lord will show you mercy. I don't know the evil you are into. Now is the acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. If you are committing fornication, adultery, or uh, uh, masturbation, or lesbianism, or homosexualism, or maybe you are into abortion, or into prostitution, private or public, or you kill human beings, or you are into hired assassin, or you are into kidnapping, all those things are sin. You must repent today and say, Lord, I will never try them anymore. As you repent with all your heart, now is the acceptable time. God will show you mercy. After death, no repentance. And no amount of repentance. Of course, you have heard the, the word of God about, about uh, Abraham, Lazarus, and the rich man. The rich man wanted to repent in hellfire. Was that repentance granted? Please answer me. The, the, the rich man said, allow me to come and preach to my brethren. Was he allowed? That his case has been closed. My prayer is that your case will not be closed. That you repent now and make heaven at last. I don't know the evil you are into. Now you are hearing this word. Take the advantage. Amen. So that when the Lord shall appear, you will escape the wrath of God. Are you hearing me? You will be among those who have been raptured. And even if you die before that time, you will make heaven. Amen. You are ways. I don't know the evil you are into. All these people involved into, um, you know, stealing, picking pockets, arm robbery, and uh, stealing money from people because of the uniform, because of the position, or smuggling. All those that are always angry and, um, you know, uh, fighting, quarreling. You must repent now. I don't know the evil you are into. 
Maybe you are among those people that uh, organize people and they constitute one chance and begin to extort money from people. Or you steal with your biro. Or you shit people. You must repent. Amend their ways. You cannot amend after death. You cannot amend after rapture. Are you stealing? Are you into one chance? Are you into armed robbery? You must repent to them and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Are you among those people that are into uh, you know, fraud, uh, uh, fraud, do paper, do bank, do by government? That is evil. You must not be involved into such things at all, at all. Renounce them and say, Lord, I will not continue because now I have decided to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to live a righteous life. Search your life. I don't know the wickedness you are into. Those that are smoking, taking Indian ham, or cocaine, or marijuana, or taking cigarettes, or snuff, or you are working in a tobacco company, you must renounce those things and resign for that tobacco company. And stop smoking it and stop selling it. Or maybe you are selling drug, cocaine, or heroin. Or maybe you are buying it for people. Or you are selling it. Or you are working well that doing those things. You must resign. You must stop it. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. The Lord will show you mercy. I don't know the evil you are into. Those people that are taking alcoholic drinks, whether 1% or half percent, you don't have any business with an alcoholic at all, at all. You don't need to sell it. You don't need to buy it for people. You don't need to walk in brewery. Or you don't need to walk anywhere that's selling it. You need to resign from that place. I mean, you are with. Are you serving it in the hotel? Repent, resign from that place. You had a brother that, that was working in club. And he worked for 12 years and 12 useless years. He couldn't achieve anything. What can you achieve when you are working where, where you are uh, um, you know, a partner to a prostitute and a drunkard? And you drink and drink and drink more than everybody. What are you going to be? What are you going to serve? He worked there for years and he walked and became nothing until he repented. He had the testimony today. Repent and it shall be well with you. Are you hearing me? Amen. You are ways. I don't know the evil you are into. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Such your life. The Lord will soon appear and it will be a great day. A day of mourning, a day of sorrow, a day of crying, a day of repentance that will not be accepted. I pray that you will not be among them that repent like that. Repent now. Are you hearing me? Amend your ways. Now is the acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. You are not the owner of your life. Anything can happen between now and tomorrow. Repent now. There is no point of proscanating and saying, I will repent next year. I repent after I marry. I repent after I have made money. I repent when I become old. Do you know whether you are going to be old? Do you know whether Jesus will come today or tomorrow? Do you know whether death will come? Amen. Now. The Lord will show you mercy. I don't know the evil you are into. All these people that are involved into marry and divorce that I hit the whole Western world. Almost everybody has a record of a divorce five, six, ten times. If you're among those people that left your wife, you must bring your wife back. Is it clear on what I'm saying? And if you are there, and your second wife or third wife or fourth wife you have to pack your bag and baggages and leave that place because it doesn't belong to you. And if you're a man that has them three wives, you must remove the second and third one and return your first wife. Because marriage is between a man and a woman. Marriage is for better, for worse. Marriage is until the dead, it separates us. I don't know the evil you're into. I mean, you are ways. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 19, verse 4, Have you not heard that he that made them before made them male and female? 
And verse 6 said, What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And Malachi chapter 2, verse 16 said, God hates putting away. I mean, there are ways. You can't do what God hates and then enter the kingdom of God. Repent, and the Lord will show you mercy. And all these uh, women that make up, make up your face, that make up your eyes, make up your leg, it is abomination. You don't need attachment or weaving or palming or painting. You don't need a bleach jean. You don't need the painting of your hands and leg. You don't need extra finger. You don't even need the earrings and jewelry or bangle. You don't need the extra fingers. Those things are abomination in the sight of God. You don't need makeup. God has made you a wonderful person. God has made you a beautiful person. Those makeup is not from God. So search your life. Are you among those that dresses that expose your chest, your armpit, your tummy, your waist, your laps? You must cover up properly well. Don't forget. The book of Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 30 said, When they are spoiled, what shall they do? Though they go after painting ornament, which means whenever somebody has spoiled, he begins to paint and make up. You don't need to make up. And if you are spoiled, you can amend now. And it shall be well with you. Amend your ways. How about this young man that put rough hair, scattered hair, and they make Jericho? And they play their head like women. It is abomination in the sight of God. You don't need to make up. You don't need a jerry coil, rough hair, or play your head like women. And if you have done that, please remove those things. You don't even need those earrings and those rings and bangle and cross on your neck. You don't need them at all, at all. And if you're among those women that put on trousers or men's garments, the abomination in the sight of God. And if you are men that put on women's garment, skirt and blouse, and move around, that put scarf and put earrings, that is abomination in the sight of God. You need to gather those things and burn them. For the Bible said in Deuteronomy 22 verse 5, a woman should not put on a witch pertaining to a man, and a man should not put on a witch pertaining to a woman. All that do that, a abomination to God. If you see men that are dressing like women, that are homosexuals. If you see women that dress like men, that are lesbians, that are advertising themselves to other women, that they belong to a men group among them, you must not do that. Because Revelation 21 27 said that nothing that worketh abomination or defied that shall enter the kingdom of God. I mean, there are ways so that it shall be well with you. Now is the acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. Remember, we don't know when the Lord shall come. Do you know? Please answer me. Do you know when the Lord shall come? Do you even know when you are going to die? I don't know. Now, hence we don't know. Why not be ready at all time? So that whenever it happens, you will not miss heaven to suffer from everlasting to everlasting. God forbid. No matter what is pushing you now to miss heaven, avoid that thing. Remember, our master said, if your eye will make you to go to hell, he said, take your eyes away. If it is your hand, he said, cut it off. If it is your leg, he said, cut it off. And these things, this part of the body are very important. That's what God is showing you. No matter how important that thing may be, it could be money, love of money, pride. He said, cut it off. It could be wrong marriage, amend it now. Because if you go to hell, you will regret from eternity to eternity. I want you to understand, hell fire is real. Make up your mind, amend now. Tomorrow may be too late. Are you joking with immorality? I said, ah, it's not the same. And then it doesn't matter. And you are committing fornication, adultery. Repent now. 
God judges evil. He said, adulterers, whoremongers, immoral people, fornicators. He said, they shall have their leg in their part, in the leg that burned with fire and brimstone. Liars, unbelievers. Repent now. The Bible said in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, the wages of sin is dead, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want you to understand, if you want to escape, surrender to Jesus, making your Lord your personal Savior, salvation shall be given to you. In John chapter 10 verse 10b, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. In John chapter 8 verse 36, he said, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So surrender to Jesus. He will give you salvation. The Bible made us understand in John chapter 1 verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe in his name. If you receive him, Jesus Christ, he will change your life. He will make you a child of God. He will give you power that changes your life completely. Power that makes you to live life that pleases God. Power of sonship. That power will be given to you. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. A Christian is not a sinner, and a sinner is not a Christian. My sisters and brothers that are here, if you are a Christian, be a Christian. If you are not a Christian, stop hypocrites uh, or hypocrisy life or hypocritical life. It is abomination in the sight of God. Stop compromising Christian life. It is against the word of God. I mean you are waste. Make sure nothing is standing between you and God. Stop playing with sin. Stop joking with sin and saying it doesn't matter. And people are clapping for you as a wise person. On that day, when the Lord shall appear, you will mourn. You will regret. You will want to repent. You, want to, you may want to destroy those things that hindered you from repentance, but it will be too late. The question is this. You have 50 years now, or 60 how many years are you going to live more? All those things you are making, they are looking for. What are you going to do with them? Repent now. I mean, they are ways. And I'm assuring you, that day will be a day of joy for you, a beginning of joy, and not a day of sorrow, a beginning of sorrow. Remember, God demand total complete salvation total freedom which means inside and outside holiness which means purity all round and the bible said in matthew chapter 7 verse 20 by their fruit you shall know them if you claim to be a christian let us see it in your character let us see it in your dressing let us see it in your appearance let us see it, your lifestyle. I mean, you are wait. And the Lord will show you mercy. So, as we pray now, all I want you to understand, do not be among those people whose sorrow will be everlasting from eternity to eternity. You better sorrow now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that your joy will begin when the Lord shall appear. Or when you drop your body, it will be an eternal joy from eternity to eternity. So, as we repent, I'm assuring you, and go on to live the Christian life. The Lord will give you salvation in Jesus' name. And at the end, he will receive you to glory in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 10 verse 13, he said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And as we call upon God this hour, the Lord will give you salvation. And will give you everything that accompanies salvation. Shall we rise up and pray? Viewers, what are your expectations? What are you believing God for? 
I'm happy to announce to you that the yokes are now broken. Visit us today at the Lord's Chosen Charismatic Revival Ministries, 10 or Dauphin Park Estate along Osho de Apapa Expressway, Ijesha Boss of Lagos, Nigeria. You can visit our website at www.thelordschosenworld.org or email us at headquarter at thelordschosenworld.org pastor at thelordschosenworld.org or chosen help desk at yahoo.org visit us today and you'll never be the same again join us join pastor lazarus mocha's revival hour sunday 7 a.m tuesday 8 a.m and 5 p.m wednesdays new converts class 5 p.m thursdays deliverance and counseling 8 a.m bring your family friends and relations to the lord's chosen charismatic revival ministries and all your sorrows shall be turned into joy if you try you will not cry let's all try sorry lord Jehovah, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am. Eyes closed and head bowed. Lay your hands upon your chest. Eyes closed. This young man that are taking in their hand, if you will raise your hands up today, I will pray for you. Your life will change. And the Lord will bless you. I'm waiting for you to raise your hands up. The one that is committing masturbation, raise your hands up, I'll pray for you. And you that is working as an agent to the devil, hire to keep, and you are involved in kidnapping. If you will raise your hand up, I'll pray for you. But if you refuse to do anything like that, if you go out to try that evil, you will die. And I pray that God will show you mercy. Raise your hand up, I'll pray for you. And you have been into armed robbery. And you organizing your gang for another robbery. And somebody brought you here. Don't try it. If you try it, you will know that I'm serving the living God. You will be caught. Eyes closed and head bowed. That person wearing charm in your body. My friend, raise your hand up and renounce that charm. And go home and throw it away. The Lord will deliver you and show you mercy. Eyes closed and head bowed. And you that have been sleeping with a woman that is not your wife, even a married woman, can you raise your hand up and say, God, I am sorry. And that lady there committing adultery, keep your hands up. Eyes closed everywhere. Eyes closed. Quickly raise your hand up and say, God, forgive me. God bless you there. And all of you that are involved in prostitution and abortion, keep your hands up. No more abortion. No more prostitution. Keep your hands up. I'm praying for you. And those that are smoking and drinking, keep your hands up. And all those people that are stealing, keep your hands up. And as many that have unforgiving heart, and those people that are into homosexual, keep your hands up. And let's be and say, Lord, I will never try it again. I will pray for you today. God will change your life. And you that have been backsliding, and in fact, your heart has gone far. And the Lord is talking to you today that he is the only good God. That anywhere you go, you will find trouble. Except you surrender to him totally. Except you come back to him. Raise your hand up and pray for you. That yoke must break today. That yoke must break today. There must be restoration in your life. And you have been committing fornication. Keep your hands up and breaking that yoke. Eyes closed and head bow. I want you to say this word after me. Almighty God, all of you. I come before you in the name of Jesus. Father, I confess that I'm a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. Lord, I promise you, I will never continue in these sins anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me. And he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for my justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash my sins away from my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Keep your hands up. I want you to sing this song before I pray. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender all to Jesus. Blessed Savior, I surrender. I surrender. Sing it again. Surrender your spirit, your soul, your body to Jesus. I surrender all, all to Jesus. Place a Savior. I surrender. The compassionate Father. It is never your will that any soul should perish. Whatever they have done against you, known and unknown to them, in your Lord, remember mercy. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil, by your authority, I break that yoke. Every yoke of sin, I command you, be broken in Jesus' name. Father, from this afternoon, I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus. I pray, cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus. That he, he that is good.